All right, so like I said, the vector data structure data model has some disadvantages as well. You know, some of the things that you can do on your phone when you take a picture, yeah? The, the girls, the ladies, they are very good at that. Take a picture, they put some, you know, you see some bunny thing on there. Yeah, all those things are things that are raster, you know, analysis, like, not analysis, but in filtering and image, you know, image processing. Those things are only possible when you have the raster data. So we don't have, that it's not available. Algorithms, sometimes algorithms are easier implemented in raster yeah, I got this for manipulative analysis functions. They are complex in the rust in vector. Okay, in vector, you have to have coordinates, try to figure out what's happening. Are you okay? You know, do some hydrological analysis. You you want you want to use raster data, right? Is okay. And so you may have issues with processing power. Okay, continuous data, you can easily represent elevation with um, say spot heights. Spot heights are a vector way of representing height. Okay, you realize that you've been missing something depending on the intervals that you've picked, convenient. So it's not effective. Continuous data in vector is not effective. All right. Spatial analysis and filtering within polygons is impossible. You can't do it in, in a polygon how can you be there and what, what would you be doing? I okay. You can't do spatial analysis. You can't analyze anything in the polygon. The polygon becomes a black box that you can't do much about. I okay. All right. So I think most of these have been talked about already. So let's take note of it. Cell size determines resolution. I think we talked about that. The smaller the size. So the resolution is what, when you buy a new phone, you see, you talk about the megapixel, these days people don't talk about it. People know that once I buy a, a, an expensive phone, it will take good pictures. That's the resolution. I okay, but I remember we used to talk about megapixels before. Yeah, when you buy a digital camera, yes. You know, before these phones came, you know, we had the digital cameras that were true. People had digital cameras and you need to have know the megapixels. I okay, it determines the resolution, okay of representation all right any question on this please any question or forever hold your peace any question on vector and raster data model if you have any question you can ask are you happy if you're not happy you better say it Say it now. If you don't say it, don't go and talk, blame me anywhere. Do you have any questions for me, guys? Are you sure if I ask your question, you get it right? I think that's the main question that you have to ask yourself. Yeah? Please, are you oh, good? Gosh. Yes, I'm uh, moving on, I'm, I'm changing topics. A problem. The, network, the network is not stable. Okay, so that is another problem, is that okay? Sorry about that. Sorry about that, I think we have to just get you over the phone. Yeah. Please try and get yourself a good network. Okay. Apparently, you are sitting in the trotro. I heard someone say that, so, and you are here telling us that you don't have a good network. Hmm? In the trotro, you are saying you don't have a good network. Hmm? How can you have good networking? Outside. Sir, uh, it's not me. Uh, who is that? It's who? No, no, no. Sir, it's not me. I'm in the house. You are in the house. There, who is doing this? Someone is trying to sabotage you. 
Anyway. It's not me, GW. <laughs> yes, GW, please. yes, we can see that's where the, the PPP is coming from. <laughs> eh? GW. Okay, anyway, guys, let's quickly talk about this one. Since you are okay with Rust model. Points, lines, Sorry. and polygons. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, I'm listening to you. I'm listening to you. All right, let's carry on. So I, we want to talk about map projections. Is that okay? Map projections is very important. Your reference the map projection. What is your reference? Your reference is saying, show me where something is on the surface of the earth. I mean, basically, that is the meaning of it. Are you okay? That's your reference. So if someone says your reference, what is it? You should be able to just say it yourself. Are you explain it yourself? It's very easy. Are you okay? One of the ways that we are able to know where things are is making use of the longitude and latitude. Is that okay? Longitudes and latitude are the basic that you can do. Okay, when you take in the representation of the earth on paper, it's called a map. It's called a map. So we want to know a little bit, some features about a map we should know. Let's start with map skill. What is map skill? So it's a method for expressing how map distance compared to ground distance or the distance on the surface of the earth. So please, this is map skill. I think you all know it already. It's okay. Distance on map divided by distance on the ground. Easy. You can use either a scale bar to represent the scale. Or you can use a ratio, which is RS skill, to represent it. Is that okay? Or you can use verbal skill. So there are different types of skills. Okay, so this one here, down, down here, this one is the representative fraction skill. That is the skill bar. You draw it. Okay. And then you can use your map to say one millimeter represents thousand kilometers. That is also there. The last skill versus small skill, what's the difference? Are you okay? Large scale covers a smaller area, large small scale covers a large area. So we have to take note of that. It's very, very tricky. Is that okay? So large scale is example of 1,000, 2,500. Are you okay? And then small scale is 200,000. So one is to 2,500 is actually one divided by 2,500. And one is to 200,000 is one divided by 200,000. Now, what does that mean? If more or less divide, so less denominator means you have a large value. Are you okay? Not only does it make it a large value, it also ensures that objects can be distinguished on the ground when represented. Are you okay? When you deal with a large scale, okay, then your paper has to be very large to be able to show a lot of things. Are you okay? So um, that is it for map skill. The main idea of map projection is to be able to represent the round earth, okay, on a flat sheet of paper. That is the reason why we have what we call map skill, representing the round earth on a what? A flat sheet of paper. There was a time where if you said that the earth is round, people were going to stone you because they didn't believe in that. Are you okay? So I've even watched a movie in which a certain lady was stoned. She was doing calculations on her, trying to prove that the world is round. You know, and it wasn't like you don't even say it. It's an anathema. Are you okay? Something you don't say. So the earth is round from you know the physics and the studies that have been done okay and we try to work on a flat surface so the danger of working on a flat surface is that you are making a mistake because what you are looking at is round are you okay so now you can see that we have you know the internet this is an internet application well this is a, a web application which can allow us to go to any part of the earth is okay. So this is 
representing our world. This is an example. The lines, you see lines there, you have, you know, Ghana represented, we see a place here represented as a point, you see, and as a terror, you see some Rasta data down here. Here, this is a picture. The blue area is a picture. Are you okay? But then as we go closer, you see representation of rows by lines. Are you okay? All right. Etc. But bottom line is that everything that we're doing is on the round surface. So we are just trying all our best to represent it on a flash sheet of paper. And hence the need to find out what the errors are and what the implications are. Not only that, also you can see we have a North Pole. Okay right there, and then we have a South Pole. So Southern Africa, Zulus and Nelson Mandela, they were all down here. Is that okay? That's a South Pole, all right? And then we have the equator dividing the Earth into two halves. We, have, we call the top half the Northern Hemisphere. Then we have, the bottom is the Southern Hemisphere. The equator is a latitude, also not a latitude or a parallel, and it has the value of zero, so every line which is parallel to it, okay, of course, that's what they are called parallels, are actually sustaining an angle at the equatorial plane. So this is 10 degrees on top, 10, 10 degrees north, 10 degrees south. I, okay, then we can also have an important line called the greenish or the prime meridian. I, okay, so the prime meridian goes to London, also not the greenish meridian. So it goes to Greenwich. Are you okay? somewhere London. So if you actually live in Greenwich, then that's where the whole thing was established. That particular line was established. And it's a longitude, it's also called the longitude. So lines moving from the North Pole to the South are called longitudes. Lines moving round parallel to the equator are called latitudes. And this is a way of finding things, are you okay? So when you watch prison break, then you realize that Coordinates became an issue. People were being like killed, you know, people were being threatened. Do you have the coordinate? Do you not have it? And things like that. In the prison, yeah? If there's a movie called Prison Break, so I always use it to teach in GIS. Always I talk about Prison Break. I have to find a, a different movie, all right, to use. But basically, the earth is round and uh, we are making every effort to plot it on a plush sheet of paper, like a, a construct, a, a builder. Yeah, the plan, if someone gives you a huge structure to build, that's plans from Kofoedia to Africa. It's possible to have that structure. Then you realize that you put it on a flash sheet of paper, which is really not right because you are somewhere on a, on a curve, okay? On a sphere, somewhere, an appro approximately a sphere, okay? So before the digital data can be analyzed, they may have to undergo some manipulations. We may need to do a conversion, map projection, it's necessary, is that okay? So the coordinate system that you start with is longitude and latitude, and then you may want to convert it into something that is more, um, you know, Cartesian, what we call Cartesian coordinates, X, Y. We, we are familiar with X, Y coordinates, okay? During any building process, the, the coordinate system that is being used to place things is not spherical, are you okay? All right, so, um, yep. But that is the idea behind mar projection. We want to project something that is round onto something that is what flat. Is that okay? So that mathematical transformation is what we are calling map projection. Map projection. Are you okay? So yep, that is it. We may want to convert. There are so many coordinate systems. So once you convert, in fact, the way we do the conversion is to make use of different surfaces are you okay different surfaces here there's a function that is converting longitude and latitude to x and y coordinates over here okay so mathematically when you try to change the round thing to a flat surface there's a certain formula that you have applied okay one of the common formulas that can be used you can see on the board that we are converting longitude to x we are converting latitude to y okay 
don't worry too much about this. It's okay. Don't don't worry too much. But just understand that we have longitude and latitude. And then when you change it to a flat surface, as you are you you have been using, okay, yeah, on a map, for example, then you have to um, have a certain conversion. Is that all right? All right. So different projections have been developed. Okay. So what it means is that when you are doing a project between Togo and Ghana, then probably dealing with different coordinate systems and you have to know how to combine it. I okay, combine the data. All right. So we need to have a way of combining the data. Is that right? All right, great. So this whole map projection thing, yeah, there's more to it than what we are looking at. So I'm going to explain the rest on the board. So let's go to the board. Okay. So now we're here. All right. So someone came up with an idea. If you have the round surface, how do we convert it to a flat surface? Okay. So the first suggestion was that, why don't we, let me get this out of the way. How did we get here? Okay, take it out. The first suggestion was, why don't you, well, it's not the first, but really it's a suggestion that have we used a cylinder and then cut up the cylinder, open up the cylinder, develop the cylinder. Then you have this projection. Okay, so then your longitude, which were originally here. Okay, so even a use a yellow color. So longitudes become straight lines. Okay. And then your latitudes also become horizontal lines, which they stand as you approach the North Pole. So this is the North Pole. This is the South Pole. Oh, sorry. <laughs> south, North is top, South is down. This is South Pole, then the North Pole. Yeah, and then your latitudes are going through like that. Are you okay? Right. So someone also said, okay, why don't we use a cylinder, a, a, con, a cone? Yeah. Let's use a cone. You say fit a cone to the top and then develop it. Okay. So now these are, this become your latitudes, which are actually originally going this way. Okay. So the equator, other latitudes, longitudes are going down south. Okay, so you have concentric circles and then you have straight lines going down like that. Okay, then someone will say, okay, no, let's use a flat surface. Why don't you just put flat surface to it and then project everything to onto it. So the idea is that you're going to project mathematical. This is a mathematical process. Project the longitude and latitude onto this one. All right. So then you have all your lines going up like that. So the North Pole is here. The South Pole is there. Okay. All right, so here we go. Someone said, okay, great, this is it. These are different ideas, three different ideas, but we can actually, depend on where you are, you may want to use one of them. For example, the flat surface one is given the name azimuthal projection, azimuthal. I think I need to give you some uh, an updated presentation because what I have doesn't touch on what I'm talking about now. I agree. Okay, this is conical projection. Conical, like a cone. We are making use of a cone. Conical. And then this one is cylindrical. Cylindrical projection. Okay, so you can decide to also depend. So the 
conical projection is good for the temperate regions, India, Asia, I mean, Asia regions, Japan, going around some parts of the US. Are you okay? Then we can have the cylindrical projection is very good for the tropics. Are you okay? Africa, Brazil, going around some parts of, you know, North America. Are you okay? Then the polar regions, you make use of the azimuthal. Another name for the azimuthal is stereographic. Wow, writing with my mouse is not going to be easy. Stereo. Graphic. Okay. So, yep, these are different the three concepts of map projection. Depend on where you are, then you choose one of them. All right. So, in fact, there are different what we call aspects. There are different aspects of a map projection. So the aspects are as follows. You can have you can have the air, the round earth. They decide that you put it normal, or you can decide to put it transversely. Call this transverse. They are, you can decide to put it oblique. So this is called oblique, all right? So guys, you are supposed to know this. It's not in my presentation, but I'll send you the notes, but I'm teaching you for now, okay? So this one is called a normal projection. This one here, it's normal, normal aspects. This one is transverse. Transverse, right? Then we can have the oblique aspects. Oblique, oblique you, oblique. Okay, so oblique, transverse, and then normal. I'm sure this is not the first time you are hearing these words. They are used in technical drawing and a whole lot of places. Transversal, normal, oblique aspects. It show different orientations of your developable surface. So what we are doing with the different surfaces, the, the cylinder, the cone, okay? And then the flat surface is that we are trying to simply push or project, yeah, the longitudes onto it so that the earth is no longer round but then flat. Because originally it is round. Are you okay? So we want to make assumptions. So we will be creating, we we'll end up creating a coordinate system. Okay. One of the most popular coordinate system is the universal transverse mercator. Okay, which we have to talk about. But I hope you are following. If you have a question, I'll mute your mic and ask me, please. I don't think I'm in a hurry to go anywhere. This is the concept of map projection. Yeah developing it up, cutting it up. When you use this one to, when you use the planar, you end up with surface. Can you imagine the center will have the minimum distortion. The whole idea of these projection systems is to have, we minimize distortion because distortion is like an error. We don't want it, is that okay? We don't want distortion. So we created, projection system for a particular country to minimize the errors. Without which um, departments like survey, let me just say construction that you can't do your projects. Are you okay? Because if you don't do that, well, longitude and latitude, setting it out becomes difficult sometimes. Are you okay? It's not easy to set out a longitude, but it's very easy to set out an X, Y coordinate. Are you okay? All right, so this is the reason why we have then the need for the projection and the different types of projection require that we understand the different types of projection and how we can project from one convert one to the other all right so this is it okay we have something we call the day two the day two is a reference surface okay from which we can actually 
uh, measure, especially we talk about heights, yeah? So reference surface that we can measure from, all right? So when you have, I want to explain datum to you in a very basic way because most of you are builders. If you want to put up a building like this, yeah? The height here has to be with reference to a certain baseline. I don't know what you call it baseline, but that is the concept of the datum, is that okay? From here to here now defines the height, so that you can know where you know whether you are there or not. So the surveyor establishes this datum. All right, it's the same thing in concept. So we can talk about the mean sea level. It's a datum. Is all right. So the Earth itself is not truly spherical. Are you okay? It's kind of shaped in an interesting way with the sea filling parts of it. Are you okay? Let's see what this the F apparently contains about 70% of water. That's interesting, isn't it? We can be engulfed by it. So let's assume all this is water bodies, you know, and it's a section through the earth. You can almost create, not almost, but you can create or you can have, you know, you can have, let me try and do this. You can fit a sphere, are you okay, to the earth? You can fit a sphere to the earth. So you just go like that should i use a different color okay let me try different. let me try again and see let me try again and see so let's assume i want to fit around okay i thought this one would draw do a shape for me but it's not it's not working okay that's fine okay great so that becomes a reference surface, are you okay? From which we can, you know, measure from, are you okay? So the mean sea level is there, which is an extension of the mean sea level everywhere around the earth. So you get a ship, you get what we call a droid, you know, these, some of these things are a bit too much for you. <laughs> Let me just say construct, construction, the construction class, but, it's worth noting that there's something called a mean sea level, okay, which everywhere you are, you can measure your height with reference to that. I'll start with that. Are you okay? Then you can have this, what we call WGS 84. So we can define a spheroid, a sphere. We just take it like that. Okay, that we can measure from, which is, which is not gonna look like this. Are you okay? But it's going to have dimensions with semi minor axis, semi major axis, etc. Okay. So that is day two. All right. And then one of the things we're going to talk about today, as we actually end the whole lecture, we're going to talk about the UTM which is actually UTM. So UTM is a popular projection system, right? It stands for Universal Transverse Mercator. Mercator is the name of a person. I saw it in a Jehovah Witness handout, and I was wondering what is this doing here in a religious material, you know? But apparently, the person was trying to just understand how the world is. Okay, so his his quest and his search for the truth led him to create a map projection called the Universal Transverse Mercator. So the Universal Transverse Mercator is a cylindrical projection. Okay, it's universal because it applies to the whole world. The whole world is actually zoned into 60 zones. Is that okay? It's, we create 60 zones around the earth. Okay. And then um, that means every zone will be what? Six degrees, please check that. Six times 60 is 360. And uh, the distortion, so every, so Ghana can, is in actually zone 30 north. And it's on 31 north. So in 30 or 31 north. Okay. You always have to, you know, tell or define your hemisphere. Remember, I've talked about the hemisphere, the earth can be divided by the equator into two. Okay, North Pole 
is the northern hemisphere is here, South Pole, and this part is called the Southern Hemisphere. Are you okay? Southern Hemisphere, Northern Hemisphere energy. All right. So now, if you take Ghana, and if this is the zone for Ghana, we can literally see that the distortion at the edges of the projection is about 1.0003, 0, 0, 0, so one point, so approximately one. So it's a scale factor, are you okay? The middle, the central bit, the, or central meridian, not the central bit, the <laughs> central meridian is actually having a distortion of about 0 0.9996, scale factor, okay? Scale factor means how much you have changed, are you okay? That's how much, I have, you know, an object has changed can be defined by the a scale factor. I hope you will know, this is JHS stuff that, uh, you know, we are talking about, you know, at this point. So, um, yeah, so we can talk about the inverse, describe the transverse, universal transverse Mercator by talking about the zones, the distortion, are you okay? And then the coordinates. So the coordinates you get are in meters, okay? They are in meters. So if someone gives you a coordinate for your project area, and it's universal transverse Mercator, expect that it to be what? In meters. All right, so we are almost coming to the end of my projection. As a concept, I'm just talking about how the concept works. So how does the coordinate system work? The coordinate system works in such a way that you have a central meridian, which has a false northern, a false eastern, 